also. But let, let's go through this document very shortly in like three minutes. Um, you have micromanaged and overregulated what the state has already accounted for. Okay, you say this is fair and reasonable to require property owners on which livestock waste is to be deposited to obtain a permit. Again, we were after haulers. Um, I think we're going to have to ask all the nursery people to get permits. For what they are about. Um, that was page two of twelve. <laughs> Just I know you like to take your notes there. Um, the property on which page four of twelve. The property on which the livestock waste is to be deposited must be designated as agricultural. I am neither. Okay, I am residential right now. If I want more than 10 loads of manure, I'm entitled to it. Okay, don't tell me that I can't bring manure in to bring up my soil to a certain standard, but the nursery people can do whatever they want to their soil. Okay, yes, they are regulated. They are selling their product. They are retail. That's one thing. But as a resident, do not limit my rights in this country. Page six of twelve. <clears throat> this is this is a doozy. The acceptance of a permit by the property owner shall provide consent for a town representative to inspect the property solely for the purposes of ensuring compliance with the terms of the permit. Um, only with permission of landowners. You may have a permit, but no one enters property without permission. Okay, and I know you would tell me, oh, it's implied we follow that. Unfortunately, in this town, we can no longer count on things unless they are in writing. And again, micromanagement, overregulation, and I'm sure the attorney bill is beautifully for this. Item 9, as well as drawings or layouts of the property to verify that the livestock waste shall be deposited and used in compliance. Will those drawings need to be to architectural standards? Please advise what blueprints will be necessary. Oh my God. Okay, page 7 of 12. Oh, but we can have manure from outside the state of Florida? Right here. That it originated from outside of the state of Florida may be deposited on property within the town. Again, focus was waste haulers bringing manure into the town. Page 7 of 12. 10 loads pursuant to the permit. Don't even know where you got your soil rights from, but you better go to the University of Florida. Okay. Within 200 feet of any well, have you talked to the health department and asked them what their regulations are? Are you better than the health department? I think it's 80 feet. Um, you know, this good neighbor policy, if you guys want to be Fort Lauderdale, if you want to be Minto, just come out and say so. Don't pretend that you're ag if you're not. Just say what you're doing. And finally, uh, I think the beauty of this all, um, <clears throat> the friendly neighbor thing here, imprisonment not to exceed 60 days. Don't tell me you guys haven't. Just flown the coop on this and got a little power hungry. Thank you. Laura, good morning. Examples like the banana farm, and I think it's such a wide net that you really, I think you really went, I think you really got extreme on the issue. I spoke to uh, a couple of uh, experts at the extension service who 
really don't share your opinions and actually use uh, fertilizer you know, that we use for our pots and stuff is actually more damaging. You don't really allow enough manure to come in, even from your neighbors, to be useful or to use it. You don't really have enough uh, to be bona fide useful, and you don't allow it for people who are not bona fide, which see, am I right, or do you allow things for, for non bona fide? A little bit, I think, right? I think it meets probably some of their needs, but also if you were to ask a, uh, I was sort of thinking because I like using survey and drawings to figure out what I'm doing. If you were to actually ask a survey guy, if if I really, I, I mean, I, I I don't like this huge book of ordinances that you guys are doing, but since that's the law, I like to comply. And I was trying to imagine what it would take for me to get my survey guy to comply with a drawing that would show me the area where I could actually drop it. And when I look at my own situations, it's amazingly complex. And the actual, uh, it would look like a gerrymandered congressional district on my own property to try to figure out where to drop it. Um, I did a couple of drawings on your setbacks once. And People were amazed at how much money you actually lost in setbacks. <laughs> but if I were to present a drawing of what the practical on the ground <coughs> consequences of this are, I think you'd be amazed. I would have to go ask my neighbors how to you know, locate their wells and in addition to my wells and the water sources. It would be, uh, it would be, it would be really hard to deal with. So that's really it. Thank you, Lord. Nina, Corey. Hi, Nina, Corey, and Tony, for what you wrote. Um, this was like we had a few bad apples in town, and we all knew we needed to do something about it. And it's what we have here as an ordinance to say, let's kill all apple trees in the entire United States. This is what this feels like. I mean, it is totally overboard, completely overboard. I am as much for protecting water quality as most of these people are in, in this room. Um, and I understand we have people absolutely abuse it. We have certain properties, owners abuse it, getting paid for loads during season. And we have time to fix this before the next season. We can fix this to be something better than this, let's <coughs> hang everybody who gets a load of manure. I mean, it's like, I, I couldn't give my neighbor, uh, you know, a, a little bit of manure to go and, and grow their tomatoes. And I've grown fantastic tomatoes on this, okay? But I'd much rather want to use horse manure than use fertilizer. The grass, even for us horse owners, the grass, we are on so much sand, we need to spread our manure. I don't produce enough manure half the time for my property to substitute what I need on there. And with my horses grazing, I don't want to use fertilizer. Now, buffers, 50 foot setback. Okay, dumping the, 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 the pile if somebody gets it, but then spreading it, you need to spread it there. What if you want to build, you know, have your Eureka Palm or whatever other other hedge growing there? Wouldn't you want to have rather have that with horse manure fertilized than some other toxic chemical? It doesn't make sense. You've gone as far as to say people can be imprisoned for 60 days. And up to 60 days. Then you go get attorneys, you tell them this, you know, law enforcement, everything back. You are then have the catch-all phrase that if you were unconstitutional with this ordinance, that you can still apply the remainder of this ordinance. I mean, even this, to have to have this catch-all phrase in there tells you something is wrong. Um, you know, it's. I understand what you're trying to do, but this is this is this is crazy. From you know, consenting to an, any inspection. To, well, we've got a typo in there, but that's what I'm really worried about. Um, you know, 
I mean, it's just, it's just, it's over, absolutely over the top. And then it doesn't even, and I don't think everybody realizes this, it doesn't often distinguish between the manure that we're spreading when I have manure out of my stable and I put it in a spreader and have it go around the property. There is no distinction in the language that this is not what you're talking about. I don't want to see this not only hurt everybody who's receiving a little bit, bit of manure from their neighbor, I don't want this hurting the people who are just simply using their own manure to go fertilize their lawns. If this is this is this is over the top, please reconsider this.
maybe things that I'm hearing are, are to me, um, issues that don't really get at the guts of what we're trying to do. And I haven't, I don't think a lot of residents that are, that would see the benefit of this have taken the time to come out because they didn't see it as, you know, something that, that they had seen and that may not even be aware of because they don't know. So, um, if we want to send it to ULDC uh, or if we want to just as a council modify some of the areas tonight and, and pass it, then I'm going to pick it up. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, I have a quick comment. Uh, I know this all started with uh, the haulers from outside the town and then we, we thought about it and we wanted to also know uh, where it was going. And then we started thinking about uh, the neighbors, and then we started thinking about the water. Uh, I, I, I've mentioned it before in the past. Um, I, I think, one, it's very difficult to enforce. And then two, uh, I think it's, I'm personally fine with just a free permit just to know where it's going. And for, for the residents, um, I mean, our, our main focus for the dump truck. And uh, I'm, I'm not really concerned about the people who are trying to spread it on, on their lawn or anything. We were just trying to focus on the dump trucks and target the property owners who are abusing um, the ability to dump on their property. Um, I, I do think it's it got a little too difficult. Um, I, I think we should look at it a little more and try to make it for property owners and residents. Uh, I, I don't think the purpose was to make it more difficult, but really to stop the hauling and stop um, the abuse and everything happening. Okay. Uh, no, I messed up on the floor. I think we need to vote on it now. It sounds like it's going to get voted down. We need to quit paying legal fees. We need to quit lingering on this. We either vote it down or we vote for it. So let's let's do a vote and see which way it goes and leave it alone. Okay. Yeah, I would say that if it loses, it's over and you gotta start off from scratch. There's no need to walk versus having a chance to re reform this. One of one of my issues and, and my problem has always been that the rampant calling from our neighbors to the south. During the season, the trucks the amount that come in here, the people that are abusing it. That was my concern. I really don't have any problem with any generated Los Angeles groups going anywhere in Los Angeles You know, and, and that's where I'm at. So if we could just do it with the, the haulers and say they cannot haul it from outside. If we're, if we're required by law to say, you know, we have to include from out of state and that's a requirement by the law. I mean, I'm, I'd agree with Jim. I would have to worry about a group, a, a load that came in like that. My concern is the outside haulers, and I want to stop them. I really don't don't care about any kind of permits or knowing where it goes or a survey of a property. They're putting it in their own property. If they want to stick it on their own well, they're just stupid. You know, I mean, it, you know, but, but it's up to them. I think the setbacks are important because then you're encro encroaching on your neighbor. But whatever you want to do with your own drinking water or your own house, I mean, I really don't. That doesn't bother me a lot. So I really would like to keep the part that says we will not have any haulers come in here. Allow the sheriff's department to enforce that and say nobody comes in from out of town. You've already passed that ordinance. We've already passed. We've already passed that ordinance. Uh, uh, this was this was the second. Oh, kind of just with the property. All right. Already this was the overreach. <laughs> okay. <laughs> then, then, then I agree with with uh, Ron. Let's let's go over. Uh, I have one more. You would not. You would not benefit from the setbacks. You don't have those in the first ordinance, so you lose out. Yeah. Well, yeah. Then yeah. we have to take another pass at the ordinance that would say just setback issues. I mean, that, yeah. that's the only thing that that, that I, I believe is being a, a good neighbor. And for somebody to pile their stuff on, a, on the property line is not being a good neighbor. That happens all the time. That's the only thing that I would I would include in that. At all. And we, could direct, we could direct Mike to go back and re, rework this. I think we can. Well, what I like, what I think you ought to do is decide what you want to do with what's before you. Okay. 
because it, 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 if it's going the way it sounds, and what you're going to have to then deal with is the 2012 ordinance that remains. One simple page that everybody can understand is that pages and pages, books, yep. surveys, permits, and right. all this crap. If we can agree on sending it back to Mike's report, and the Tom saying, I hear on one page, I'm not sure it's one page, but something that addresses the setback issues really is addressing the neighbor that is not bringing it in, but is affected by it being brought in from another property within the community. If we can direct them to redo that, is that something we have in front of us as an option, Mike, or to postpone this with the directions that we redo it and then vote on it later? It, it, yeah, I mean, that's always an option. It's always an option. Would change be too substantial to... This is a very, this is a, you know, comprehensive ordinance. If there's, if, if this is, if it, if it has a lot in there that the council doesn't mm -hmm. want to consider, then my recommendation would be to um, maybe we just maybe tell you, give, give you a report, maybe a connection, just what remains in 2012, and you can decide then whether you want to strike something. And from the, from the ordinance that exists, it would have been repealed by this, because you still have permit requirements from the 2012 ordinance that are remain. So, you know, if, what I would recommend you do is act on this ordinance, make a decision as a council, and then we can, you can give us, if you feel like giving direction tonight, you can, if you want us to, put it on another agenda for you to give us direction while we give you a copy of this so you can understand what remains after you pass the holler, the park, you can do that too. Okay, would you be clear as to what the options you send? <coughs> we, can, we can postpone the action to vote. Post, you can you prove it. You can deny it. You can postpone it without a vote. You know, we'll get a motion to continue. If you give a motion to continue, it really won't serve a service unless as a council you give a specific direction about what you want us to do. Um, if you deny it, then you can move on or you can give us more direction tonight. It's that, that's your those are really where you're at. Okay, but we're on the top. Uh, my understanding is that we stop the bulk coming in to Lock's Hatchet. Understanding, that's right. Okay. I, I guess. It's already you, passed. You've got the hauler one passed. Okay. Uh, then, then, then my question if we've got the hauler one passed, then, then, then let's vote this down. Let's turn it over to our ULDC committee, residents that live in Loxahatchee Grove, and save ourselves 185 bucks an hour. If they come back with a good plan, Mr. Rock mentioned that a lot of people might not be here because they don't know, and I 
I believe you're probably all familiar with the expression, the elephant in the room. There are people in town getting elephant poop from Lion Country Safari. And I don't believe legally livestock, I mean, I don't believe elephants are livestock, so you might want to think about that if you're going to go follow people off to jail. Um, the other thing is, when you talk about um, manure from out of state, I believe Palm Beach County is accepting garbage for their new incinerator or whatever magic potion they have to get rid of garbage. So there's garbage coming into our town or our county. You can't really recycle garbage other than burn it. And what's that doing to the environment? Manure. Did, degenerates or rots or whatever and it gives off good stuff. Good for it, but I don't like the haulers either. Okay. Thank you. All right. We have a motion and a second. Roll we'll call vote. Councilman Rocket? Yes. Yes to approve or yes to deny? Well, the motion was to yes, approve. Motion to approve. Okay. Uh, Councilman Liang? Yay. Mayor Browning? No. Vice Mayor Carroll? Nay. Councilman Dolls, nay. Nope. <laughs> nay. The nay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, let's take a short break and we'll come back to the administrative update. <laughs>
talk with the uh, town engineer George Webb relative to the ability of the town to take uh, your additional control of the Trevor Boulevard and to indicate that uh, the town was interested in creating roundabouts at both B and F roads as was recommended to the town council uh, at a joint meeting by the Planning and Zoning Board and, and the RECAG Committee. Uh, I was able to secure an appointment with uh, Mr. Webb on uh, June 16th and I met him. Uh, I basically asked him two questions. The first question was, uh, what was his opinion of the town obtaining or gaining uh, jurisdictional control? And the second question was, what is the process the town has to go through? Uh, very candidly, he indicated that he did not think recommending jurisdictional control to, for the town was something that he uh, would be able to recommend, but he was staying open to it. And he did indicate that there really isn't a formal process in the county relative to these kinds of requests. So basically, he, he indicated uh, a letter from the town which, will, uh, which could go to either him or County Administrator Weissman um, would be sufficient enough to get the ball rolling. And he wasn't sure whether uh, the process at that point, whether they would just take it to the County Commission for a review or, or how they would address it, but they would then react and, and go forward. And so I indicated to him that I'd be bringing it back to Council and, and getting direction, obviously, to go ahead and do that. Uh, a second part of the discussion was we were talking about the developments and he indicated, uh, at least offered uh, to me the opportunity to provide him with comments and conditions relative to the Minto development. And uh, taking that into account, I decided to have our engineer take a look at uh, conditions that the town could potentially <coughs> recommend. Uh, that would be beneficial to the town. So the, our, our engineering folks have drafted up a number of things that I can put in the letter to Joe Webb uh, as conditions potentially to, to Minto that would make the town a benefactor uh, if such were to occur. So I guess I'm asking council to reaffirm, number one, that you want me to write the letter to the county regarding the jurisdictional control relative to the Chobie. And two, that you would like me to write the letter to George Webb indicating uh, the town's conditions, concerns as it relates to me. Okay. Uh, discussion by council. Uh, regarding number one, I would say yes. Regarding number two, I'm not involved in the uh, Okay. Uh, is everybody all right with number one? I think everybody's on board with number one. Uh, number two, I, I, we need to know what, what those conditions, in other words, are. Uh, it's, it's going to be hard. I guess I want to know what kind of conditions we can put on there. Uh, and if they're going to listen to me. I would say they're more in line. I mean, I've, I've had some discussions with the engineering. It's more like requests that we would like as, as a result of, uh, you know, if they are, you know, they're putting, if they're putting conditions on the development, if, if approval is what ultimately is going to happen there then I'm trying to get whatever benefit I can to the town. Like pay for our traffic light. Like water, like sewer, like whatever we can get. Well, water and sewer is going to help us. Uh, uh, well, it's, it's an option. It's out there. We can ask for it. So all we can do is tell us no. But I'd like to see if we can scrap it. Um, if, if we send a letter uh, relative to new town, I would think it'd have to be starting off with our resolution basically that said we don't support the growth beyond what they've already approved. But with that growth, they need to do certain things. But my concern is that we'd be handing a letter that says expand Okeechobee to four lanes. That's what the, the response, I think, reception would be on that. And I'm not in favor of anything that suggests that we're in favor of expanding the four lanes. My, that's my concern. Because there's a, and, and I don't know, what does the engineer charge us for this opinion? Uh, no control. Uh, what he's worked up to this point, I haven't got legal Do you know about what the uh, 
charge is going to be. We just have to work time. We don't know what it's going to cost us. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think the other thing that's important is that we, we specify what we've already decided on, and that's the horse crossings with those those signals. Uh, I'll show you. We're not going to lose that. We need that. So. Well, again, I mean, I'm not going to write the letter, obviously, until you look at it. But what I'm indicating is do you even want to entertain that? I think it's an opportunity for us. Again, it's not conditioned from the standpoint of us doing an analysis. I mean, we can be doing that. Staff's doing that. That's not our mission. I think what he's indicating is there's something the town is looking for from a conditional standpoint that we would request. Okay. Well, if we're going to take this up, maybe and kick it around, but I would say that any money we send has to lead with we don't support additional growth beyond what's already approved. We don't support widening from two lanes. And then if we want to list the list of things that the windows coming around and there's such a safety issues that they should pay for. But I'm just concerned you kind of open it up and say, well, we'd like all these things and um, we don't first mention the fact that we don't support beyond the 2,900 homes, for example, and that we don't support widening the road. Uh, that to me was the lead in. I uh, would hope the council would agree with uh, it. Maybe we can talk about this in the next meeting and we had it the first time we were hearing about it. Well, my intention is if, you, if I give you, if you give me the go ahead, I'm going to bring a draft letter back. I'm not going to just send a letter. Well, I know I'd like to know what the cost is from an engineering firm. Mm -hmm. okay. Any other council member? How about you? Virginia Standish. Virginia Standish, 15410 North Road. I think the best thing I learned in life is I don't know what I don't know. And we don't know what there is out there that we could ask. I think Mark has a great idea. I think you need to ask what's out there. You need to say, hey, what's available to our account? We gave away so much of what was Loxahatchee Grove. We gave away Albertsons. We gave away the hospital. We gave away the Chamber of Commerce plan. And then all we hear about is this landowner, what we have to come up and pay and pay for. We need to start asking, hey, if you're going to put this in there, what can you do for us? If, if they want to talk water and sewer lines, I'd love to hear how can we get it for free for us. Let's, uh, let's cry. Let's cry like Michelle Bimone is crying because she's got her hand out. I want my hand in the cookie jar. There's something I don't want to know that we put our head in the sand and didn't ask for what we could get because us the landowners are going to have to pay for it. I will give you an example. I have a, a, my experience with Palm Beach County. Small property in town. You think I'd have water and sewer at the same time, wouldn't you, gentlemen? Right, right near West Palm Beach Airport and everything. If you don't ask for it and you don't stick to your guns, all I have right now is the water line. Because a commissioner decided, because his mother lived in the neighborhood, that he didn't want her to have the expense of the sewage. You need to ask for what you can get. And it behooves you to know. Why, how it will benefit the residents. Please do not stick your head in the sand. Thank you. Well, I've got since the subject was brought up, and I have the new plans with me. I don't know if you guys two wanted to also or not. A motion to receive and plan. Yep. I'll second the motion. Okay, we have a motion for receiving five. All in favor of receiving five are saying aye. Aye. Any motion on the side? Do you need to do one also? Four, four, zero, I'm sorry. Four, um, oh, you didn't vote, sorry. Um, I don't know.